Good afternoon. Thank you for coming here today. One of the few words that I can really grab onto right now at this moment is just wow. Ramsey County is absolutely proud to spearhead this $243 million investment into the future. When Ramsey County set out this bold multimodal vision, it was done to connect people to work, education, entertainment, recreation, generate jobs, foster economic development opportunities, and preserve one of the most important pieces of the city's county and state history right here. We see some of these opportunities, they become retail centers, they become museums, but to actually take it and put it back to the use that it was intended to build it for the next 100 years is a unique opportunity. We're here today to celebrate the rebirth of a historic structure, to celebrate the construction of a modern transportation center, and to celebrate 3,000 new jobs, folks. The more you connect, the more you grow. Union Depot will connect places to where people live and work in our region. The Union Depot is a major investment and a long-term commitment. But in today's global economy, an investment of this scale is not a luxury, it is a necessity. Great communities have transportation as their center. They understand that that's what helps cities grow. That is what develops our community. And we cannot compete unless we are willing to invest in our community and invest in the future. The groundbreaking to me was, uh, was a significant day. Coming from Public Works, I always like to get away from the desk and go out and, and smell the dirt and see the, the projects going forward. And, and uh, the day that excavator grabbed a portion of the loading dock and tore it down, it was like, okay, this is really going to happen. With its grand columns and 90-year-old elegance, the ceremonial entrance on 4th Street in St. Paul's Lower Town neighborhood is what most people have come to know as the Union Depot. Behind those columns is what the railroads called the Head House. Tickets were sold here, and you could visit lounges, restrooms, and railroad offices. This building is the only Union Depot many have ever known because since the last train left this station in 1971, the head house has remained open, hosting commercial offices, restaurants, and most recently, condominiums. But when the trains were rolling, the head house was really only the front door to the depot. And when the train stopped rolling, that door was closed. Today, beyond that door, largely shuttered, dark, and cold for nearly 40 years, are historic and architectural treasures awaiting rediscovery. Taking people on tours, I always love to open that door, pull that door open, and they get in and they stop and they go, wow, this is amazing. Nearly 300 feet long, the soaring column-free ceiling of the original waiting room arcs gracefully over an enormous expanse of terrazzo floor tiles. Decorative plaster, historic and artistic details are everywhere. While overhead, three magnificent skylights, darkened since World War II, await illumination. The entire waiting room is elevated, a design that allowed trains to pass underneath and passengers to remain in the comfort of the waiting room above before descending directly to their trains below. This was the largest construction project in downtown St. Paul in the 20th century. It required $15 million, took 10 years to build, and employed hundreds of workers. But to build a building of this grandeur in today's dollars would be significantly more. The bones and infrastructure of this building are so solid that it would be a shame not to, to preserve that. So often these types of buildings are refurbished and revitalized for alternate uses, hotels and restaurants and and retail, but this one's gonna be, first and foremost, a, a depot again. We've got Amtrak will be stopping here. They'll move in their Midway transportation hub to here. We'll have Jefferson bus lines. We'll have tour bus lines as well. Runs of the casinos, do tours around the city. They'll be stopping here. Bicycles, you'll be able to come here and get a rental car or a taxi. 
and then pedestrians as well going to the river, and then light rail, this will be its last stop on its line between the two cities. It's a fantastic marriage where you have a, a station that drops off light rail, two, three, four hundred people could easily move right into the depot, much more efficiently than a, a handful of cars that, that could drop off in that same space. The Union Depot is a fast track project. Federal funding requires project completion by the end of 2012, just over two years from the Ramsey County Railroad Authority approval in September of 2010. There is much to be done. The windows will all be refurbished. The exterior of the skin is going to be cleaned up and refreshed. We're going to fix the ceiling. We're going to open the skylights up again. And we're going to polish this floor. The roofing will be redone. Uh, there'll be added levels of insulation to make the building more energy efficient. The head house, uh, all the finishes will be restored in that section. So it'll be fairly significant. It's a dark color right now. It'll be a very bright color. And then out on the train deck, uh, back behind the depot, we'll totally rebuild the historic elevated deck. Nearly 300,000 square feet of concrete supported by hundreds of concrete columns and countless underground pilings, the train deck is by far the largest element of the 33-acre Union Depot restoration. It was built to lift the rails and keep the trains moving despite seasonal flooding of the Mississippi River. But the biggest challenge will be balancing the speed of construction that we'll need to achieve in order to be done by our completion date with the sensitivity of working on an old building. On a typical project, you might start off with your excavation and then you do your foundations and then you build your structure and enclose it and then do your finishes. It's a nice linear pattern all the way through. On the Union Depot project, we started off with everything at the same time. challenge because it's a big site. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of stuff that has to get done in a, in a short time. Over 300 workers will be on site daily during peak construction times. The different trades and craftspeople working side by side to maintain the schedule and ensure completion in 2012. Precise planning, careful day-to-day -day management, and the sheer physical size of the project will make all of this possible. Part of this project involves preserving St. Paul Union Depot. But it also means that the depot has to change. It has to be relevant to today. The 20th century depot was designed to accommodate hundreds of trains and thousands of people per day. The 21st century depot, despite its focus on many types of transportation, may never again see that level of travel demand. So it's important to remember, the meaning of multimodal extends to more than transportation alone. For me, the vision of this important building is not the building itself, not the preservation of the elements of the building per se, although that's critically important. It's really what the preserved and restored building will do for the neighborhood. What we will be doing in the next two years is making a beautiful container again for human activity. I think people will be drawn to events in the headhouse, whether it's a wedding or it's a political function or any kind of big civic event, or it could be a market or something out on the front lawn. So I think it'll be something where there's always something going on and it's different and you can't come once and experience everything. That is my hope, that, that when all of this is done, that the people who live here will view this great room, this multi-purpose room, as the living room of St. Paul.